A few days ago, the California Senate passed a bill to make it illegal for store employees to confront shoplifters. Meanwhile, San Francisco headquartered Old Navy announced it is closing its San Francisco flagship, joining Walgreens, T-Mobile, Whole Foods, Amazon Go, and Nordstrom's in fleeing the city. Asked why Old Navy was leaving its hometown, one store manager said shoplifters hit his store, quote, at least 12, 14 times a day. We were hit 22 times in the last two days. At this point, stores in downtown San Francisco are just waiting until their lease is up and then they are gone. Which sucks if you're a chain store. It really sucks if you're a mom and pop with your life savings at stake. Adding fuel to the fire, one of California's largest insurers, State Farm, last week announced it's exiting the entire state for business and property insurance, joining insurance giant Allstate, which already left six months ago. State Farm cited the, quote, challenging reinsurance market, meaning they can't get anybody to insure their California policies. This means thousands of Californians are now going without insurance, going naked in the industry lingo. Note this locks you in. You can't sell your house since most banks won't write a mortgage on an uninsurable property. Fortunately, the city of San Francisco is on the job. They just released a glitzy $6 million tourism campaign. Literally the next day, the two biggest hotels in the city went bust, citing, quote, street conditions, almost as if they didn't think the tourism campaign would do anything. Beyond hotels, the newspaper Guardian recently wrote about, quote, empty skyscrapers in San Francisco, while the main commercial drag, Market Street, is festooned with for sale or lease signs. San Fran's office vacancy rate has now hit 31%. Pre-pandemic, it was 4%. A recent study from Berkeley found cell phone traffic is actually down 70% since pre-pandemic. Note that downtown accounts for 75% of the city's tax base, almost half of sales tax and 95% of business tax revenue. So if downtown becomes a ghost town, San Francisco runs out of money. It defunds the police whether it wants to or not. By the way, the city's solution is not to bring people back. It's to convert downtown office buildings to, wait for it, public housing. Over 11,000 units, according to one plan, which should do wonders for bringing back that downtown tax base. In fact, one local activist group, Shaping San Francisco, wants to skip the humans altogether and literally knock down these skyscrapers. Deconstruction, they call it, since tearing things down is a bit of a fetish on the left. A 2021 paper by a trio of business professors predicted a post-COVID urban doom loop for U.S. cities as businesses leave, driving more crime on empty streets and lacks less tax revenue to hire police to deal with it. It turns out cities didn't have to wait for the doom loop, they're making it themselves. On the bright side, urban voters who keep electing these clowns are the first ones to feel the pain. Some of them are waking up, snapping out of their warm utopias to demand city officials actually arrest criminals and clear out open air drug markets. Sadly, they are not waking up fast enough, going by recent elections in Chicago and New York. So expect more dying cities, more failed businesses, more property crashes, bankrupt hotels, and if they keep going, more deconstructed cities. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.